the biggest turn on beyond the fact that that was awesome was the fact that as a guy, you know, you know it was that awesome. you made your wife come <laughs> top three. That like for me as a married guy, you're just like, that's what I'm How fucking talking show about. Go this is where did the- Fly, fly. Welcome to the Date Your Wife podcast. Where we're wearing glasses and my wife can't seem to keep her microphone erect. You know what's great about this week's episode? What? Your beard. My beard. What's what's good about my beard? I trimmed it down. Yeah. You didn't like my beard last week. You talked so much shit about it. You know what's so funny is I I didn't even like in the past I would like nag you and be like Ugh, like keep, like little jabs, like both beard. I didn't say anything. I was just like, I do like reverse psychology now where I'm like extra sweet and extra sexy. And then next thing I know, I'm like, oh, you want to shave the beard? Or <laughs> okay. If so, you want to. <laughs> is, this, uh, is this because you've learned that you get more done with sugar I than you do with spice? I have a principle in life with all things. Danielle, how do you get what you want in the end? And then I'm like, and what are the steps required in between? And I'm like... Have you, really, right. have you really thought this way from the beginning? No, not from the beginning. From, from. I mean, you said you have a principle in life that you live by, and now you gave it to re- us. I'm just asking you when no, you started I living this. I started living this when I, honestly, probably when you and I were having, like, issues and we were in therapy, and I was like, okay, I can, I, I can punish him by, like, being more standoffish and, like, not be involved and, like, do my own thing. But in the end, I don't really get what I want, which is like either like we're going to do this, we're going to stay married, we're going to work on our relationship, or we're not. But either way, me being like, well, fuck him and like going the other direction doesn't really help any kind of end result I'm looking for. So Mm. I think that marriage requires a level of submission in order to get what you want. And it's so interesting to talk to a lot of couples because they're not, they're like, well, if I'm like, so you want this, but then they don't want to do the steps in between. I'm like, well, then you can't have that. So maybe make a new goal. So you get clear about what you want. <clears throat> Let's come back to the beard. So what did you want? I just, I think you're a handsome man and I don't like the beard. In fact, it's getting a little long again. Like It's getting longer again. Oh my gosh. It's not, oh, it is getting a little bit it longer. A little I long. trimmed it, what, like four days ago? You trimmed it right after the podcast. Oh, so it was a week ago I trimmed yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, so we're back to the longness again. This is your <laughs> nice way of saying you should trim it for tomorrow. <laughs> just, I'm just like subtly uh, bringing it up. Well, you know, it's like I wasn't exactly inspired when he said, what, well, you want sex with Sean, your barber, blah, blah, blah. I was, was like, no. Though. It was kind of funny. It was funny. All right, so you, you, get, you came and brought up an interesting point, which is this idea that you get clear about what you want. So let's come back to that for a moment. Um, when you go back to the drama years, dun, 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 did you actually know what you wanted or were you clueless? Be honest. Do not say, well, to be honest with you, because that means that you've been lying Did before I know? that. Did I know what I wanted? Did no, you know what you wanted? I, yes, I wanted a... No or yes, because that's yes. confusing. Yes, you did? I okay. didn't say no or yes. I you said, said no yes. and then yes. No, I didn't. I said okay. it was a firm yes. Okay, so firm I think, yes. I think that everybody knows what they want, but it's like deciding if they want that with that person. Did you know what you wanted? Yeah, I wanted... What did you want when I, things are going to hell I, in a hand basket? I wanted that passion. I wanted to have good sex. I wanted to have good communication. I wanted to be, like, attracted to you and not... Did I, you want this from the beginning? I had this from the beginning, but then I think I... Like, I, I you talked had about it. The, I don't know if we what, had it. We did. When we were dating, we ha- it was oh, great. We're dating. Even dating early married, but then it was like... I don't know what happened. Like we got married and we stopped trying and we started both working a lot. And then all of a sudden I was like, I don't know how I thought that was going to work out. This ignoring you thing. You know what? So I would think, I literally think back to dating where you're like, you put in a lot of effort. Like it's nine o'clock at night, but you're like, you want to come over? Yeah, I want to come over. Like you, and you talk to like two in the morning and then all of a sudden you get married. You're like, it's nine o'clock. You get hitting the, you're going to bed. Cause I'm, I'm definitely going to bed. I got a big work day tomorrow. But when you're dating, you always have a big work day tomorrow, but you're always up till like 2 a.m. You don't care. You're like, Ah, oh, and it's these moments of having this connection where that's where the spark builds. And then all of a sudden you get married and you're like, well, I, I did my work. I'm out. <laughs> Do you feel like that was Mormon culture in I us? I think it's all cultures. You think Honestly, it's all cultures? I think it's like relationships. like Relationship cultures? I think when you're married, you got to you gotta keep dating, but it's hard because you're like, all right, I'm in. I got it. Like you kind of want to like stop the momentum but it's like it's like with marketing right with business all of a sudden if you stop your marketing you like you might be okay for like six months but if you stop for like 12 months then like a year you all of a sudden you're like why isn't my business working well you stop marketing weird you stop dating your wife weird you stop mm-hmm. marketing you lose leads but then it's it's not even like you stop you almost like hit this place where you kind of like 
you're like there's like this, you're you're just you kind of settle and then it's like peaceful and then. But you what did you want in the beginning? So it, I heard you say you're wanting. So you're saying, listen, we we went off the path, but you were saying you wanted some things. You said you wanted passion. What is passion? I felt like when we were dating, we had a lot of chemistry. Like, I feel like we still have a lot of chemistry. We do, but then there was like that's what I'm saying. Like when so we, we had some natural chemistry. What do you say to people who don't have any natural chemistry though? Why are you married? Wow. Okay. Why seriously? Like I look at people that are like, well, I got married because he looked good on paper. I'm like. Do you want to have sex with him? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, but do you want to have sex with him? Like, honestly, like if there was no spark, I'd be like, I'm out. Like, honest, you when I when I met you, I was 18. You were 25. You drove a beat up Chevy something with stick on hubcaps. It was a Dodge Spirit. I don't know. But Dodge Spirit. You had a kid. Like there had to be some chemistry. Like, come yeah, on. I was Hawaiian a cute. I was a cute 18 year colada, old, and I was like. Freshener. Um, and everything on paper looked bad and said, no, this guy is not for you. <laughs> like our first, our, from the first time I met your family, even I was like, man, this is a different experience for me. Wow. I took my wife to go visit my family in Northern Utah and our very first experience <laughs> at the house, which is so funny because at the time I didn't think this was a big deal. When I think back on it I now, w- I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't know how I thought that was going to work out, but I, I was being me. You know what? And so it's we good, went to my parents' and it's house. it's a good thing that I met you at 18 because there was... Honestly, I, I like, I think I, I, you wouldn't have been down. Let's tell them what happened because you come to my house. It's Christmas time, New Christmas Eve. We decide to get in the, the pickup truck with ever. some hay bales in the no, back. No, I thought it was the weirdest thing and ever. And we drove and down dirt roads to, to this, Walmart. Like, I just, I'm going to tell you, it's, it was a little weird. Like your family was like, hey, we need to go Christmas shopping. And I'm like, it's Christmas Eve. Who goes Christmas shopping on Christmas Eve? Obviously the whites. And then I was like, and what, is there a mall in this town? Like this? There what? was no mall. And they're it's like, called there's a Walmart. Walmart. And I was like. Cool. Is there a Target? They're like, no, there's a Walmart. And I'm Target's like, too high end. For yeah, that so I was city. like, that's fine. So then I'm like, oh, should we should we drive separate? And they're like, oh no, you, we got a truck. And I was like, oh, there's hay, there's hay in the truck. And they're all, oh yeah, we'll put a blanket down. And I was like, oh, okay. And then we <laughs> we we galloped in our <laughs> we galloped in our truck down the dirt roads to and the back like, entrance to the Walmart. And then I remember you got you you. I decided I wanted to buy sweats. everyone sweat. Everybody got Everybody sweats. got matching and sweats. And I got to this point where I was like, this is funny. <laughs> you're, you're, you leave what you really thought was, what the fuck am I doing here? No, I was just like, oh, they're a tight family. We were. We are. I yeah. mean, it's a, yeah, that's how it goes. I mean, my family kind of, we didn't have money. So, like, for us, you know getting what, in you a truck with a bunch me? of hay okay. was like, okay, you know let's go. Buying me? sweats for it's everyone like, else was a big I deal. I thought it was kind of weird. But what sold me is, like, when we went back to your house that night, I remember your family brought out board games. And they were just, like, goofy and silly. And we had fun. And I was like, oh, I was like, they're weird and funny. And I like it. Like, it was just, yep. like, it was just kind of, like. It was fun. You Listen, know what I mean? If you want to have game night, you come to the White House. You don't come to our house. Our house right now, we don't do game night too much. We don't. You go to Deb and Brett White's game night at my parents' house like growing up. Like, they're serious. No, it's serious shit. Like, you don't, you don't fuck around at the game night. Game night's a big deal. Everybody shows up. My sister makes game board tables right now for wow. a living. Did you know? Well, side business. You know what? No. Haley? All right, so we get clear about what we wanted. What you wanted was a guy who would take you to Walmart on Christmas Eve on the back of a pickup with some hay bales because you were super used to that lifestyle. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I mean, man, I think... <laughs> man! You must have had some real. You were super certain, oh, man. Oh, I was so confident. I was like wearing my Jinko jeans and my my Jinko jeans <laughs> you know and my plaid always, shirts. You've always carried yourself like very like well. Like, and I, I was actually talking to a friend of mine. And I'm like. The hottest man in the room is the guy who is like comfortable and confident with himself. He doesn't have to try too hard. Like he just, it's an energy, right? And I just remember like, <clears throat> like when when I would see you and you didn't even know I was watching, you carried yourself like in a very confident way. And that's what I liked about you. I was like, that's really sexy. But, but then I, but then, yeah. Well, that's true. So <laughs> one of the things that you wanted was passion, which we had some of that. You wanted sex. Now, this was not a normal topic for us. This was kind of a rough thing right out of the gate. Like it just was. Oh yeah, married sex was like rough for us. You know, you weren't sure if you liked it. I was. Sh- I mean, it was rough. Okay, and I, you had birth control issues this. and all kinds no. of crazy shit going okay, on. Okay, I'm just gonna. Well, I, I appreciate the truth is coming out 20 years later. Give it to us. So, in any kind of Mormon or Christian culture, it's like don't have sex, don't have sex, don't have sex. And probably that was probably a good frame for me. I'd probably would. I probably had lots of sex and ended up pregnant. So it was a good frame. However, because like just the one thing was off the table, I had a lot of experience with other things. And the other things are, I realized I was like, I got married and had sex. And I was like, 
The other stuff is way better. But then, so what you mean by other things is oral sex? No, just like all the petting, foreplay, like foreplay. everything. I was like, man, like, yeah, like everything but I was penetration. Like the actual penetration. I was like, that, that's it. That's it. Did you that's think it? that it was going to be better? Yeah. Oh wow. Well, when you're when, it's a little disappointing for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but what I realized, I was like, all the stuff in between is the stuff that goes on for a while, and that's the fun part. So yeah. I was like, okay. So you thought you just dropped all that part and you went straight to... Well, no, to... what I'm realizing is I okay. was like, oh, I'm... I'm Because like, I talked to my girlfriends, and they're like, how many men have you slept with? I'm like, one. And they're like, what the? You're a fucking unicorn. I'm like, I know, but I'm like, I feel like I had lots of fun with like lots of fun before that, so I feel like I'm good. Like I, I'm complete. You got some reps down. I got some reps. Little warm-up reps. But then we kind of went to the dark zone, which is like all those warm-up reps that you had and the fact that I had had warm-up reps, uh, and we still weren't really figuring it out. I don't feel like we really had our sex life dialed in it, at all until about, uh, about think, three years ago. I think we were ago. so good before we got married, and then and then we had sex, and then it was like, it was just like a lot of quickies. It was just like it a lot of quickies. It was bad. But then I think I, like, I was like, we got to go back to the fun stuff. Well, there was a lot. I, I, I t- if I take responsibility on my side too, there was a lot of uh, a lack of confidence on my side. I had a lot of confidence in a lot of areas, but I didn't have a lot of confidence in the bedroom. Like I just didn't. I, I felt like I was like kind of fucking it up most of the time. Like I didn't really know. I felt like I just didn't it's, even know what I was. It's a very vulnerable space for men. I'm sure. Like I'm not a man, but like I feel like women could. Pro- I could probably like jump on you and do whatever whatever I wanted. But like men, you're like, God, I gotta be like, I gotta be polite. I gotta be like, but I kind of want to take her. But I kind of like, w- like, like what? Hundred percent like, accurate. Right. Like whereas a woman, like we are, we are the most powerful person in the bedroom. We're like, yeah. Let let's me show I, you how this is gonna go down. Let's paint it this way though. If if your wife says. I want to sit on your face. There's just not a guy that's going to turn that away. If a, if if you a guy say says, me, I'm like, I want to sit on your face, you're like, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> so, I mean, it doesn't play please, both directions. Please do not sit on my face. <laughs> <Ever>. <laughs> or, like, if you ever came to, like, if you aggressively came after me, it's like, I don't push you away. If you wake me up in the middle of the night rubbing my balls, like, if this happens, I am excited no, about you, this. You not will, one man's turning this down. A woman will never get turned down. I mean, I don't know. Maybe be, I mean, man. I'm sure there's some women that Actually, get turned down. Actually, I do know. I and do, there are a few I women do, who do get turned like, down. <sighs> these guys are fucking weirdos. I, that is, I don't know that, these guys. What, you know, I think They've it's been an banished from thing. manhood. I think it's an insecurity thing. It is. If a man turns his wife down in bed, that, that he's not, he's, it's something. Do you know what, though? This actually does happen. This happens because guys get addicted to porn. Did you know this? This is actually anything, the, and this also becomes a thing because what guys get guys get erectile what if dysfunction. Not confident in how their body looks. No, for sure, same situation. Guys have the same lack of confidence, so they're like, you know. But I will tell you right now, a man, whether you're, if you don't like your body, we don't fucking care. Like, just own it and be certain. We're like, please take me. Like, but if you this show is a, up, you know what you say that it turns me on my balls tingle when you say that. But let me tell you why that's a hard thing to do because of this weird thing that you're talking about here. This dynamic of. If a woman does whatever she wants, the guy is, we're game. I mean, we're just fucking game, right? We're like, we're game, right? We're game bred. We're like, we're like, we're like Mastival in UFC. We're you, game bred. Though, we're natural you are, born. You Let's go. high sexual energy. Like you, you have a very high sexual energy. I do have a high sexual energy. This is why it was such a problem for me. I didn't really know what to do with you. Cause I was like, I feel like you were Barbie in a box. I was like, I don't know how to do this. See, but I'm like very giving. It's just like, you have to like, you gotta, I like take you. Ha- I gotta really get some trust in there. Like there has I trust to be some you, trust. Like I'm like, I'm yours. Which I didn't really do a good job with the trust game. So we have this one dynamic then of like this, this back and forth weird thing. It was hard for me to approach. I approached you a few nights ago, like a week ago. That was probably in the middle top of the night. three. Top. Top three sexual top experiences. Was it was last Friday. <laughs> Really After good. the show, it was yeah. in the middle of the night. I, you know, I what? woke you up in the middle of the night. I That's have, the first time I, I have, probably woke you up in the middle of the night ever. I, I was feeling aggressive. I always told you, I'm like, we should have morning sex because I'm like always like half asleep, kind of relaxed. Like, like I feel like that would be the best time. But you always get up at like 4 a.m. and I'm like a 7 a.m. So it's like, I'm like, you have to sleep till at least six, and you're like, I can't commit to that. I'm like, well, okay, well. The just. challenge is that I'm making love to the ocean <laughs> at that time, and mm, she puts out how, every single she? time. Yeah, today she put out real well. Uh, but let's come back. So I made a move. I was nervous to make this move. It's funny that you were nervous. I was nervous to make, to make this move. move. I was. Actually, when you made I the move, I was like, is that his hand? And then I was like, <laughs> I was making I was like, the move. Snore louder, Danielle. Oh, stop. And See, that's like, exactly what I'm talking about. And I was about. like, wait, that's his hand? Okay. <laughs> I was like, mate, so my wife's laying there, thongs on, hanging out on top of the sheets because she's hot. But I'm not sure if this is a move. Like, that's totally I'm like sweet. sitting there. I know, but like, 
I was woke from my slumber, of and there it is, it right there. That's and just I was how like, I sleep. "Is my wife making a move right now?" <laughs> I was like, "I was supposed to make a move. I don't know." What to... So I had about nine seconds of debate in my mind. Finally, I there was a piece of me that just screamed right internally. <laughs> was like, "Fuck it!" And we just went. And so I was like, you know what? I'm going to approach this nice. I'm going to do a little massage. We're going to see where this goes. I don't know if she's going to respond. She could kick me. I don't know. She could punch me. She doesn't do well. When is the, the last time I turned you down? You, pfft, uh, it's not been a while. It's been a while. When was the last time you turned me down? Yeah, I don't. When was the last down. time I really asked, though? Well, I don't really go. ask. I just kind of go for it. Yeah, see? See? But I used to ask all the time and I get Yeah, that was weird. You can't ask. You just have to go for it. Well, I don't know. Certainty, yeah. babe. I know. I didn't have it. So that's why I asked. So anyways, this is the middle of the night. I make a move. This thing goes for like, we go for like an hour. Like the experience is really intense. It's kind of like a dream. It It was great. I think that's when I woke up and I was like, that happened. Yeah, the next morning you like leapt onto me. You were like, hey, that was uh, top three. That was. I literally, it was like euphoric. So here's the crazy part as a guy, right? So you know what's, what's the biggest turn on beyond the fact that that was awesome? Was the fact that as a guy, you know, you know that awesome. you made your wife come <laughs> top three. That, like, for me as a married guy, you're just like, that's what I'm how fucking talking about. How did this show go? This is, where did, how did you, you took it here? I didn't. I take didn't. It here. Maybe I took it here. I don't know. Well, you were talking about passion and sex. So, anyway, so we have the sex as a topic, which we've kind of discussed. Now, let's look at that. You said another thing. You said passion, sex. I don't remember what the third thing was. Is it intimacy? Commun- communication. Communication. Okay, Which so what's changed like about our we communication? Had those things. Like, I felt like dating in the beginning, it's like we had the passion, we had the foreplay, and we had the communication. I was like, well, everything, I was like, in, you know how they say, like, you have you, the goggles on, right? Mm-hmm. You're just like aloof to anything else. But I believe that, like, that's kind of how it should be. Like, when you get married, all of a sudden you're like, the things that I thought he said were cute are now fucking annoying. And it's because you don't have those goggles on anymore because you, like, lost that little spark and that chemistry, right? Yeah. So you're like, how did you, you, you didn't like that before, but you were so in love and so infatuated. And people think, well, I'm married, so I don't have that anymore. So now all these little things bug me. And I'm like, well, you could probably work on building up that chemistry, that communication. And it, it takes, it literally you have to go back to, like, how you operated when you're dating there's things you say when you're dating that you don't like like when you're married all of a sudden like you have less of a filter right even like you're going to the bathroom you leave the door open like for dating going to the bathroom no the door's closed like keep it classy well i'll give you an example i used to smack you in the ass all the time and i thought it was awesome but not when we were dating not when we were dating and then all of a sudden when women get married Mm -hmm. why does our ass belong to our husband it's like they walk by and they're like my property bam i see so many guys (laughs) and you're like and girls like might be like huh but at some point you're like I stopped fucking smacking my ass. I start, listen, your ass is best, better looking now than it's ever been. You've been working at it real hard for the past year and a half. Well done. Okay. And uh, I can tell you I, have, I don't do ass smacking. You, you, notice, know, you know I, I don't do ass smacking. Because you know, I, you know what is more sexy is like when I like come in in my cute workout outfit this morning and you like, you can't even focus and you're like, hey. And I'm like, hey. And I'm like, I own him. <laughs> but you don't smack it's not like I no. walk by and you smack me on the ass and you're like have a great run babe you're literally like oh shit that's my wife and I'm like <laughs> do you know what I used to do too when I was, like I would look at you in that environment and my mind was so sexually triggered all I could think about was having sex so I'd be like oh yeah and so like, then I'd come boobies. and try to like gry- <laughs> grope you kiss you hold you and you're like get off me what the fuck I'm going for a run so now you know what I do you know what my trick is the trick is now I get sexually triggered and then I do I hold it all oh, back. Good. I hold it all back, and you I should. feel the buildup. It's like my factory workers that's start I, going, "What the overtime?" I, I was like, "You get time yourself during ready." Sex, you hold it all it's back, happening. and then you are a holder backer. I know how to have a good time. This is another thing about guys, though. Is guys like a lot of guys I know? I was one of them. Because a girl can go forever, like a girl could go forever. Like in theory, you could go for two hours, three hours, four hours. I mean, that's a lot of work. But like, you could go, and like, even yeah. if you came. Even if you came, you, you could, could still going, go. Yeah. With guys, it's kind of this like, what if I come? <clears throat> I come too soon. And so you get a lot of guys that are also paranoid about this because they're coming so quickly. I was one of them. I didn't think this was just a me thing. This is a lot of guys. Yeah, think. Like guys... guys don't expect to be really in the game for longer than about two minutes. <laughs> no, seriously. You're giggling because that's where I used to be. Why don't you just like stop and switch positions? Yeah, well, we try. Yeah, that's the thing though. Is like if you get like a lot, like a lot of the guys that we have talked to over the, you have a couple different issues right now. Number one in the forties, you got I've got guys with erectile dysfunction. That's a stressful situation for both people involved. That means the guy can't get a heart on. All right, unless he takes a pill, gets a that shot. Would, that would suck as a guy. Yeah, that would, that's it's super like that. And the crazy part, a lot of them are guys who are big muscles, big fitness, a lot of cycled steroids and different issues that cause a problem. Some of it's just like shit stop working, which causes them issues. You got people with disabilities, but you have this bigger disability, which is the disability of the mind. 
So a lot of guys are paranoid. They want to please your wife. They want to be sexually taken, but it's also a weird thing because if I'm sexually, if you aggressively sexually come after me, I, I got nothing more than 43 seconds for you because you're just, if you're in my ear and howling and doing the thing and talking dirty, I'm like, God, fucking keep going. Except for the fact that inside you're like, I can't last. I got nothing. She's come at me with all single. She's come at me with the audible. She's come at me with the visual. She's come at me with the physical. She's coming at me with the spiritual. She's coming at me with the psychological warfare. I am literally being so stimulated I can't even keep it in anymore. So you then know, the challenge becomes you're like, I only last 45 seconds. But then, then I found my superpower. Okay. I know. I know. I know your superpower, babe. But let's not share too much <laughs> on the show. So this I'd is. I'd like to think of it as my superpower. It is your superpower. <laughs> 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 okay. I like to Maybe think I'm about it a bit. <laughs> <laughs> as, my, as my superpower. Okay, I like where we're going with that. All right, so let's bounce a bit here from the sex topic over to the what I want because that was one of the things that I wanted. I tell guys about my non-negotiable list. You know about my non-negotiable list. I don't know about your non-negotiable list. Stop it. List. Don't pretend like you're being silly like that. I don't 2016, know. we're having conversations is what led us to like the big war that lended all wars that led us to therapy. I don't remember your non-negotiable list. Well, let me remind you about our non-negotiable list. So I started asking. So here was the thing I was I was sharing a guy, one of my uh, one of my buddies, teaching trains a bunch of people, and he said, "Hey, Matt, what do you tell guys who are having a hard time with the sex topic?" And I said, "Well, I say you got to do a couple of things." I said, "Number one, the guys got to admit that sex matters, right? Did sex in our marriage matter to you? I don't know. I'm asking you right now. I mean, I think it did, but I don't know where you're at on it that. It did, but I like lost trust in you, which then I was like not willing to like kind of give myself to you. So I was like, well, no, 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 like, but it definitely creates like. The goggle eyes, I'll just say that. Okay, so... so. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, when you're dating... Like, literally, like, when you're dating, you're like, you're like, dude, like, all your friends are like, he's this, this, and this, and you're like, I don't know, because you got, like, the goggles on. Yeah, you don't see. You don't okay, know. so sex mattered. <clears throat> if sex... Okay, so here's the first piece, right? So first thing is acknowledging that sex matters. Second piece is, is it non-negotiable? Meaning, can the marriage go forward... If sex is not an active part of your relationship, would you have been okay with a non-sexual relationship? No, but I think for a girl, that's like that's kind of that's something that I really lo I would like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think as a guy, no, I think it's something I really would like too. No, I think that I know <laughs> some women that have, they're okay with it. They have married older guys, or mar they're married to get taken care of, and they value that more than chemistry. And I'm like, but do you? Like, so do these I women do these women actually have sex? Or are they I, masturbating with vibrators? I don't know. I don't ask them. You don't have direct conversations about this? No. You don't just ask them, "Hey, how do I, you no, do you have sex not. with the older I man?" Do, I do I I have had conversations and I'm like, "Does that bug you?" And they're like, "Yeah." And I'm like, "But but but my theory is they value being safety taking and security safety more than they do sex. Security more than sex whereas I'm like, "Sorry, I want it all because I think I got to this place in our relationship where I was like, I can take care of myself. Like, I don't care. And mm -hmm. I would rather, I mean, I don't know. I kind of, I want it both, I guess. I don't know. So I, this is the second piece, right? Which is, is it non-negotiable? So I got to a point in our relationship too, where our sex life had become so like, uh, dis, just dysfunctional for both of us. Mm -hmm. I just got a point. It's like, I cannot endure this way any longer. I like, it matters. It matters to the point that I would end this marriage if we don't fix this. Which is what ultimately led us to therapy, led us to a whole bunch of other things, right? And I realized I had a history of fucking this up, right? I did a lot of things to create distrust, and I showed up in ways for the first 10 years. Well, it wasn't all even kinds like we've too. shared this before, like you had a, a little mini affair like 10 years ago, but it wasn't even that. I think that the reason I didn't have trust in you is I felt like you were always pushing me away. You're always like, you should date other men. You should do this. And I want a divorce. Yeah, like anytime we'd get in a fight, you were like, well, we're fucking not going to make it. And I'm like... Mm, I'm like, I need you to understand, like, you're you're the one that fucked up, but I realize I played a role in that, and I want to work this out with you, but I can't if you're, like, dangling the carrot in front of me and keep every other fight or conversation we have, you're like, I'm out. I'm like, I need stability. I need you to say you're all in. I need you to fucking work on this with me. And I think it, we had, like, there was, like, probably, like, four or five years where I just felt like, literally, I was like, I just need you to be all in. Like, I need you yeah. to commit. You want my trust. You want my sexual vulnerability. Like, I need you to be all in with me in this moment. I wasn't. I mean, I didn't realize I wasn't, but I think I did realize I was. I, like, there was, there was a piece of me that wasn't. Um, I, think, I think, you know what's interesting is I think about you saying me pushing you away. I, I did this. Like, I did this a lot, and I know a lot of guys who do the same thing. They do the pouty push away. But then when you would do it, I would kind of retreat, too. 
It was and bad. I would, it created I would, wait, a, I would wait till you were like so far, like just I, I visualize it like you were so far, just like literally like dangling off the cliff. And then I was finally like, OK, fine. Here's my hand. I'll bring you back up. Like I would I you would push me away, but then I would push you away even further until I was like, oh, crap. well, I hit like the dark zone where I was like out. There were a couple times I hit the dark zone when I was out and you pulled us back. Like, I'd be sleeping in a different room in the house, and you'd show up in the middle of the yeah. night and have sex with me, and then I'd be like, oh, I guess everything's okay, even though we'd been, I like, knew, two weeks of chaos. But secretly, like, I knew, I, I was, I was like, I knew that that would, like, get us some bias some time. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't necessarily think that fixed the problem now that I no. think back to it, but I was like, I felt like we were, like, on such a fine line that I was like, all right, I got to pull the sex card because, like, we're, s- like, you you go to this place where you, you cl- you're like. I you, shut people you out. You shut people out. Like, you're like, you're fucking People are dead to me. me. And I don't do that as much because I'm like, I don't like, I don't like that weight that it carries. So yeah. I'm like the type of person that's like, you're not dead to me, but this isn't going to work. Like, whatever. But you, I felt like it was like a garage door and it was almost closed. And I had, like, a window where I could slide in before it completely closed off. Because, like, once you close off, like, you just, you internalize it and you're just you just are like you're you're dead to me you're fucking dead to me no i mean that's a pattern and for me. i saw that's you do, yeah and me. i saw you do that with like friends and relationships and i was just like that's that's scary like i don't know like now i feel like you're a different human being but there was a while where i was like garrett you keep pushing people away and and you kept pushing me away and i was like i felt like i had to fight to break the cycle i'm like no no <laughs> like whether I'm stubborn or scared or whatever it was, I was just like, no, we're this is you're this is not happening. I didn't really know what to do with the fact that like a lot of my narratives and storylines were com- being completely shattered. Like between 2016, 17, there were all these stories I had about myself, about Danielle, about our marriage, about our life, about what we were up to, what we weren't up to, and I just kept like there was this fantasy in my mind that there was this magical place I was going to arrive where the guy that I was was going to magically have the woman that I thought I should have being the guy that I was, right. which was like pure fucking fantasy because there's no possible way I could have the woman that my wife is now. If, the, if if Danielle was who she is now and I was who I was in 2016 and we dated, we'd have hung out once or twice and probably be done. Like legit. Like probably because that guy then would have no idea how to engage and be in a relationship with a powerful woman. Like I was still trying to figure that out even in 2016. So, you know, fast forward five years and another baby... Like, I obviously figured that piece out. And there's a dance and a game to it that we had to really come to terms with. But that all started with me, right? So this whole thing, the third piece in that equation, when, when he was asking, well, how do you help guys that are you know, having a problem with sex in the marriage? And I said, well, one, does sex matter? Two, is it a non-negotiable? Meaning is a relationship make or break if it doesn't happen? Three, what are you doing to show up in a way such that the problem even originated? Do you feel like, I feel like powerful men, <clears throat> like even when we were talking to my brother this last weekend, and he's going through divorce and he's dating this girl where I was like, I don't know. She kind of like, she seems sweet, but like kind of a pushover. Like you need, you need like a more powerful woman, but he's so controlling, right? Yeah. Most powerful guys are controlling and, and they don't want somebody so who they can say battle they, with them. They say what they want, but it contradicts like what they do. I'm like, okay, you want somebody to kind of like be sweet and kick in the ass, but like you also don't want that. So I think it takes a little, a level of submission on, uh, for a powerful man too, to be like, this is what I want. And th- here's what I'm here's, And I need a kick in the ass and I'm willing to do it. Cause ultimately like, I think a, a spicy woman will actually make her man be a better man. And 100%. men are scared to have a kick in the ass. And I'm like, I need you to understand like this woman might actually like, you think you're like powerful. Like imagine you being even more powerful. Right. So that's kind of how, even how I look at you and I, like I expect a lot, but I think me pushing you and you pushing back is how we've gotten to where we are as a couple, as, as our business owners and everything else is because it's this level of like pushing one another and then kind of like submitting a little bit. That's a hundred percent submission, right? It's like if you can't have two alphas sitting in the same tent, Mm -mm. two alphas head button go after each other, right? So you have powerful men who are used to being alpha and then they get in a relationship and they have a woman who's rising in power, which is happening to a lot of women because women empowerment is a big thing, has been a big thing but you know since what? the launch of Frozen. I don't care if you're a powerful woman. Like we still, like I still want to be taken care of. I want a, a man who can produce as much, if not more. I want a man who opens the door for me, who takes me out, like who treats me like a woman who doesn't. But that requires, but that ass, requires like, you to become, you know, submissive to that. And I feel like right? I do that. Like there's times where I'm like, oh, I can do this on my own, but I'm like, hey, babe, can you help me? Because then ultimately, I'm like, what do I want in the end, Danielle? 
out. And then I'm like, okay, well, I should use Garrett because he's really powerful in this area, maybe with a business or whatever it is. I'm like, hey, so it takes even for me, like, submitting sometimes a business and being like, I could do this on my own, but I'm kind of stressed and I kind of want to be a mom. So why don't I, like, allow my man to come in and do this role inside here? You know what I mean? That same reversal <laughs> has to happen for guys. This is why powerful guys have a hard time being powerful women because there are times where you're in pure alpha. And in pure alpha, if I stay in pure alpha, it's trouble. Mm -hmm. which means I have to actually submit down to beta, whatever you want to call it, which is I actually drop down to feminine, you rise up in masculine. But then the... the ma and the flow is still, the attraction still, still there, though. Yeah, but no, I was going to say, for even, like, you know, alpha women, if if the guy, like, re like doesn't kind of... If, if you if you submit too much, we're like, oh, it's kind of a turn off. But there's a give and a take, right? Because right. when you're in powerful business mode or you're in powerful get shit done mode, th there's a ton of masculine intensity that comes through you. Right. And when that happens, if I'm in my, that energy and I've been, and that was our problem constantly. Mm -hmm. So you were coming, I would come back from, from the office. You come back from the salon. You were in alpha mode. I was in alpha mode. And then we come together. Neither one of us would submit. You wouldn't submit. I wouldn't submit. So the more we would headbutt, the more the war would just continue. And then they we would still, lead to this place of we like. We still have like little little jabs here and there, but I think that's why it's, I think it's hard for us even to like talk about business together. Like we'll go over like small details, but then it's kind of like okay, like we just like hang out and talk about like whatever. You know what I mean? We don't like we used to talk about business all the time when we were on date nights, and then I was like, God, this I I just need to unplug, and so now yeah. we kind of have fun. And, and we like, got back to just dealing with us. It's yeah. like not talking about the kids it, all the time. But then it's funny because people will be like, "What does your husband do?" And I'm like, "Well, yeah. he's got these apps, boy, and he's got the thing called Warrior. He's got the thing called Warrior. He likes to wear glasses, <laughs> and uh, he's quite a great catch in the bed." That's why I got him. That's exactly what I say. It's he makes weird. some People money. Like, oh. I don't exactly know how. He might be a drug dealer. No. I always talk you up. I just am always like, yeah, he has this program. You should check it out. It's like a 90-day thing. And they're like, what is in the 90-day thing? I'm like, stuff, guys. Trust the process. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think I actually do? What do you think I actually... Mine is so much exact... easier to describe. Oh, no, it's not. I cre it's I not. Have, it is, I am too. just more invested in yours, so no, that's why I know. No, people are like... Actually, I actually Come I will on. say that people people don't actually know how successful I am. Like, oh, she has a salon, and she's cute. She's a, she owns a salon in Laguna, and that's so fun. I'm that's like, good. yeah. You did 10000 last year. Good job. <laughs> I did 10000 <laughs> I don't care. Uh, I mean, I care, but I don't care. But, um, no, yeah, but you, mine's you, much easier you to are describe bit, what you I are do. Multi, 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 I do multi, hair. Seven I have an education producer. company and I have a hairline. Pushing eight figures. All right. So, listen, you, you have done <laughs> some big shit in your world. I've done some big shit. And uh, the biggest thing we did was keep our marriage together. Of all things we could have done that would have been lifelong and legacy building and eternally impacting, it was keeping us together. Isn't it crazy sometimes you think about the fact that we had not gotten this together, little baby Isla would not be? Mm, she's so cute. I thought about having another one, and then I was like... You done? Are you done? I don't know. You're I, so noncommittal with this. I, I know. Why are you so noncommittal with this? I feel like this? it's like one of those things that's like, God's like, if you want one, great. If you don't, that's fine, too. I'm like... <gasps> like, if you had to make a decision a right sign. now. If you had a decision right now. Like, five seconds. Part if, of me is like... If Would you say yes or no and right now? Part of me is like, let's just not protect and see what happens. You know exactly I, what I'm like happen. very planned out, and I'm like, I know... If you I'm, say don't protect and, and not get, happen and I don't pull, we're, we're forgetting pregnant well, for sure. Well, then we'll probably have a girl. I like, I want to be strategic know, and like plan there's a no, there's no, You're going to have to go um, buy a male dog buy a, if you want to do that. Because there's no way you're going to be able... to buy a meal. They say... go buy a meal? Okay. They say at the end of it, when the guys get older, they only make only make girls. Yeah, your sperms are dying off, babe. I need I you know. to man up those. Soldiers. I am manning up. It appears all I can create is women anymore. No, I think I think you have a higher female sperm count. I don't really know how it works, but I was thinking we could like, we could we could pick out the boys. Oh, you just want to put them on a plate and we'll just separate them out. And off take we go. a syringe. And we'll <laughs> oh, jeez, you're gonna do it yourself? I'm like that <laughs> one looks like a boy. Get him. <laughs> <laughs> They're not ants. They're not ants on the table. <laughs> Come on now. They're not that big. If they were, that'd be intense. <laughs> I don't know. All right. So dating, <sighs> date your wife. Listen, here, we're going to wrap this show up with the following idea, right? There is, there is a point inside of your relationship where you're going to have to get clear about what you actually want. Like you personally, not you as a couple, you individually. What do you actually want? Number one. Number two, what are you willing to sacrifice to get it? Right? What are you willing to but sacrifice? You know what? To get? A lot of people are not willing to make that sacrifice. And I'm like, if you found out the person you were going to be on the other side, you'd sacrifice all day long. Wow. That's Seriously. impressive. It is. It's impressive. We it's are. true. You're impressive. You're impressive. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you guys. Your squat game's been impressive. I.
I'm winning in life. <laughs> do you know what's funny? Game, when we do this podcast on date night, when it's been a few days, and there's been some close, close encounters, but no actual touchdown All scored. you want to talk about is my ass? But it's not that. It's just there's a sexual tension on the show that mm-hmm. I think is palatable. You cut it with a knife. Mm-hmm. I, I, we'd have people send in response to tell us if that's what they're hearing, <laughs> but we don't have a live studio audience, and we don't actually track any. <laughs> we just we put the show enjoy. up. We hope, we hope you, you like it. We actually come in half time, and we don't have a topic, but I feel like we always add value. Yeah, there's always add value. All right, so we're going to wrap All this right. show up. Get clear. Let me let me summarize it. Okay. One, get clear about what you want. Two, what are you willing to sacrifice? Number three, inside of that sacrifice, who must you become to get what you want? Notice the process, right? What do I actually want? What am I willing to sacrifice? And who must I become in that sacrifice to become the person who where that would be normal and natural? This was a question I asked myself. I was talking about in a training today with our Wake Up Warrior Challenge graduates of challenge number eight. Side note, if you have not checked out the Wake Up Warrior Challenge, you can enjoy and get any value from this show. And you feel like, hey, I'd like to know the practical side of how they actually pulled this off and not just us constantly talking about sex, which I love that my wife is in that position in life now where she likes to talk about as much as I do. That was not the case for a long ass time. If you'd like to figure out how to get your wife to also want to talk about sex all the time with you, well, <laughs> go to wakeupwarriorchallenge.com. We run a 42-day training. It's a $100 investment you're going to have all of our app suites downloaded to your phones you're going to get access to all the curriculum of the warriors way it used to be ten thousand dollars just to begin the process now fully available to you for a hundred dollars it is the end of this 42-day challenge there's an opportunity to continue with us or to continue on on your own so check that out wake up warrior challenge.com now the three things what do i want to what am i willing to sacrifice and three who must i become and that was the question we were talking about in today's graduation of wake up warrior challenge eight which was who are you going to have to become to be able to pull this off where the things that you say you want are normal and natural in your body, in your being, in your balance, in your business? Our marriage right now is a function of an impossible game that I took on with Danielle almost eight years ago. To restore our marriage and put it back into a place of trust and responsibility and power and connection, sexuality, communication, intimacy, it was impossible. Who we are today as a couple, impossible based on where we were and who we started in and the pit that we were in in 2008, 2009, 2010, and 2011. To get to this place, impossible. Our economic games across all of our businesses, the way that our family dynamics work, the way that our money works, the way that our life works, impossible. But the greatest thing about playing inside of the warrior system is the ability for you to turn the impossible into the possible. So check that out, wakeupwarriorchallenge.com. And right now I'm going to go head off to date night, hit some balls. Should we hit balls or go ride bikes? Hit, b- oh really? Well, because, yeah, I need clubs. We need clubs. Riding bikes are fun. We'll go do that, too. All right, we're out. Have a great week, guys. We'll talk to you next week here on Date Your Wife, the podcast. And I might even have my glasses then.